Hey guys, welcome and ting and ting and ting. And we're going to go to Slovenia. You know, and this one is called 10 Surprising Facts About Slovenia. I've had several people uh, from Slovenia commented on the uh, videos that I've done on other countries, and uh, they've done a couple on Slovenia too. But uh, they comment and talk about uh, Caribbean people, you know, that's living in Slovenia, you know, and things like that. So they said, well, let me see about some interesting facts about Slovenia. Let's go ahead and YouTube with some Simon and check this out. Since I dived into looking at a new country here on FTD Facts. But today, I'm really excited that we are going to look at a fascinating new country. And that is not one that is talked about all the time. As it's usually drowned out by its bigger brothers and sisters. And these are the countries of Austria, Croatia, Hungary, and Italy. And today, here on FTD Facts, we are looking at the beautiful, amazing people, culture, and country of Slovenia. What's up everybody? Welcome to FTD Facts. My name is Dave Wapple and today, yes, we're talking about Slovenia. Now, if you're a first time viewer here, you want to hit that subscribe button and that bell notification to learn about many different countries and places from all around the world. But hey guys, if you're coming back, well, welcome back to another episode. I'm so excited that you guys are continuing to learn more about the world with me. I love learning and I hope I, you love me uh, teaching you guys about cool stuff. Now, for a lot of you, you might be from Slovenia yourself, which let me know down there in the comment section below. But some of you guys might be from other countries around the world, which for me and most North Americans, when you think of Slovenia, just the name itself, it just didn't, doesn't really have the most appealing sound. Not saying Slovenia is not a great name for a country, but when you think about it, you don't think of it being a beautiful, amazing place. I disagree. Because I hear the names of those places over there, Slovenia and all that place, uh, and I go, wow, that sounds kind of uh, interesting. I never think, oh, it doesn't ring right, or it doesn't, you know, the rhythm isn't right, or whatever. It just sounds interesting, Slovenia. How did it, how, how did it come to be called that, you know what I mean? What, what, what is the culture like there, you know, who lives there? I guess that's just me, though. I don't ever go, what kind of name is that? <laughs> Ooh, that actually didn't sound all too good. But what I'm trying to say is the fact that no matter what you think about Slovenia, you will always be amazed because, I mean, it is a beautiful, amazing country. They have everything from roaring hills, beautiful scenery, small organized towns, cool castles, nice weather. And of course, let's not forget beautiful caves and beautiful water. I'm going to talk about this in this video. First of all, let's just start off with some of the basics. The country itself is called the Republic of Slovenia, and it's classified as a sovereign state, meaning that it is a designated chunk of land that is under a central form of government. And of course, it's nicely, conveniently tucked into what is known as Southern Europe. So for the government, it's classified as a unitary parliamentary constitutional republic, which means they got a president and they have a prime minister. And the government is all located within the capital city of Ljubljana which also doubles as the largest city in the entire country. Bit of a side note when it comes to the city of Ljubljana, it has actually had a little bit of a dark history because during the Second World War, there were giant fences and fortifications that were erected around the city. This was due to the fact that Italy, which was under the influence of Germany, basically occupied the country at that time. And to keep rebels out of this city, they decided to erect a giant fortified fence and fortifications around the city. Nowadays, at least since 1985, they've actually gotten rid of all those fences, and it's interesting that they have this giant path that people can go and walk around. As a matter of fact, it's commonly used for recreation, and it is known as the Trail of Remembrance and Comradeship. And it's pretty interesting because they haven't gotten rid of a lot of their old bunkers. As a matter of fact, if you go on the trails, you can still see some of the old bunkers that are there. Pretty cool, right? So one thing that y'all might be wondering, and it was always in the back of my head when it comes to Slovenia, is the country classified as a Slavic country or a Germanic country? Well, theoretically, they are kind of both. As a matter of fact, you could say it's three. There is Slavic, Germanic, and even Romance, which Romance languages are under the subcategory of Italic languages, and of course, being next to Italy, it makes a little bit of sense. But the question of whether or not it's Germanic or Slavic is one that is always asked. And despite how controversial this question may be when we look at the country of Slovenia from a linguistics point of view, it's classified as a Slavic country. 
And of course, most people generally just say, yes, it's Slavic. That's the way it is. However, though, people will identify its culture more as Germanic than more Slavic. The reason for this is simply because Slovenia at one point was part of the Dutch of Bavaria, which is where you get a lot of Bavarian culture. You know, Oktoberfest kind of stems from that, which by the way, not all Germans are all in Lederhosen and stuff like that. It's a cliche and it's more known for the you know, Bavarian culture, which is down to the south, I believe. And on top of that, Slovenia was also a part of the Austrian-Hungarian Empire until after World War I, when it declared its independence on October 29th, 1918. And this is because it created a joint state with Croatians and the Serbians. Also, while we're on the topic of independence, I should mention that Independence Day within Slovenia is a little bit weirder than it is in other countries. To give you a backstory, after this joint state with Croatia and Serbia, eventually Slovenia was thrown into what is known as Yugoslavia. However, on June 25th, 1991, after the fall of the Soviet Union, pretty much Slovenia went, no, nah, we're going and doing our own thing. We are finally independent. As a matter of fact, Independence Day within the country happens on December 26th every single year. And the reason for this is there was a referendum done in December 23rd of 1990. And then on top of that, once they got their independence, the constitution went into effect on December 23rd, 1991, basically 365 days later. So for their Independence Day, which is basically independence and unity, it's not celebrated on the actual dates. But however, they do have a public holiday that happens on June 25th to celebrate oh. the independence from Yugoslavia that, and that kind of is cool State Day. Sorry, correction, it's called Statehood Day. I just find it interesting that that is kind of an Independence Day. It's just not called Independence Day. Now that we got all that history out, let's look at some serious numbers. Basically, when we look at the country, when it comes to its population, it sits at 144th in the world, with a population size of 2,700,050 people. Keep in mind, that's just an estimate from 2017 to 2018-ish. Of this, with its population density, however, it jumps up to 106th in the world, with a population density of 102 people per square kilometer. And the reason for this is Slovenia is a very small country. Okay, it's not too small. I don't want to make it feel like it's small and unimportant. It's just small in size. It basically has a land size of 20,273 kilometers square, ranking 151st in the world. And if you were to compare that to anything in the United States, uh, that's about the size, if not just a little bit smaller than the state of New Jersey. So can you guess what religion makes up the majority within the country? And can you guess by how much? Well, if you guessed Roman Catholic and you said 57% of the people identify as Roman Catholic, you hmm. would be right. That being said, I should also mention that they have... So that kind of explains why uh, Caribbean people could go there, because most of the people in the Caribbean are Roman Catholics. So they'll find a church, good way to meet people and stuff. Or if they do old-fashioned type Catholics, because I mean, on the islands, it's good. when I was growing up, and I think they still do know it's old-fashioned type Catholics, you know, not this modern-day stuff that I see. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get have a rather high percentage which is about 10 percent of the population that says they are not religious and on top of that about 15 percent also say mm -mm, nah, i'm not telling you if i'm religious yay or nay as for languages can you also guess what the main language is well it's not slovenia ish nope it's slovene there's no such thing as slovenia ish unless some people are just starting to slang things up i mean canadian that would be me not Canadian, I'm Canadian-ish. I mean, we don't even have our own language. We're just English. We're screwed. We're not original, actually. That's more what I wanted to say. But of course, because Slovenia is beside a lot of neighboring countries, you've also got German, Italian, Croatian, Romani, and of course, Serbian. English is in there, but it's classified as a foreign language. I mean, I don't really blame them because the English language, I mean, is just an absolute... Ugh, it's a mess. I mean, the bright side is, is we definitely don't masculine and feminine things like a pencil. That is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my life. Sorry, I know they do it in other languages, but I just, I can't get behind it. I just, no, it's a pencil. It's an it. 
Ooh, also in Sylvania, there's actually quite a remarkably large chunk of people that were born abroad or outside of the country. And this came from reports in 2015 when they said about 12% of the population were actually not born within the country. Okay, wow. ooh, now this is the little segment of, of the video where I'm going to get into, like, the landscape and geology because, man, it's just so pretty. So when it comes to the average height on its landscape, the country sits at approximately 1,827 feet. And as for the highest point, the largest mountain within the country is Mount Triglav, which sits at an elevation above sea level at 9,369 feet. It is tall. Of course, the Triglav Mountain is part of the Triglav National Park, and the mountain itself has just been a very important, I guess, national image. As a matter of fact, it's used on many different things, such as even the coat of arms of the country. And as a matter of fact, did you know that it was the inspiration for the bump in the military Triglavga hats that the military once wore in the past? And of course, for all you enthusiasts out there that want to know that little extra bit of information, this mountain was first climbed in 1778, and this was done by a man named Sigmund Zoïs. You may have also heard of the term karst before. I don't know where you would have heard it, but I know it's very familiar to me. This is basically a type of topography of limestone, dolomite, and gypsum. And the reason I bring this up is because there's a thing within the country called the Karst Plateau, which is a type of area that Slovenia is known for because this region is home to many vast and famous caves. And of course, the term Karst comes from Slovenia as the man who invented it named Johann Wickard von Volvasor was studying this particular region in Slovenia and decided to name the type of topography it was. Unfortunately, one thing when it comes to having this type of topography and all these caves, Slovenia is listed as having the highest rate of sinkholes of any country in the world. Speaking of caves, one really famous one is the Scotian Caves, which are classified as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. This is also considered one of the largest underground canyons in the entire world. It's huge. As a matter of fact, it covers an area of 1,020 hectares, wow. with so far approximately 6,200 meters of the cave being explored. As a matter of fact, it was even mentioned as far back as the 2nd century BC by Posidonia, Apamea, and it was even indicated on the first map ever of the region dating back to 1560. Wow. By the way, did you also know that Slovenia has some of the best education in the entire world? Mm -hmm. According to a report done in 2006 by the Program for International Student Assessment, the country's education system ranked 12th in the world and 4th best in the entire European Union. Based off that report, it stated that the country had a 99.6% literacy rate and 83% of the population had completed a high school degree or equivalent, while 12% and higher have gone on to higher education other than high school. And last thing I want to close it off, let's talk about heritage sites. I've actually talked a lot about this but i just love heritage sites i'm all about preserving history as much as we can but within the country of slovenia they say there's anywhere between 500 to a thousand castles ruins and manors on top of that they say there's roughly about 2500 churches many of these which are classified as heritage sites but one i want to mention in particular is the basilica of the virgin mary in brazia and this is so historic that it is a national shrine for the country and it is considered the most visited church in all of Slovenia with over 400,000 visitors a year. So there you go, guys. I really hope you like this video. I mean, I'm old. That was quite interesting. The architecture, though, man. Whew. It's just this little small country tucked away there with all this beautiful stuff in there. Great educational system. Small countries tend to have pretty decent educational systems. I've noticed that. I don't know if it's because it's easier to handle the amount of people getting educated there or what it is, but it seems more about education too than it is about. It feels like we go to college to get a degree, they can get a, a job in that degree, but there's they get they get an education, they don't get educated. I don't know if that makes sense. Like they don't come out as uh, as as thinkers or anything like that. They come out as worker bees. If that makes any sense. Anyway, I'm Babu here. I'm gonna leave a link uh, for this video in the description so you can go check it out and look me Babylon. Also
I'm going to leave another video up here that I've uh, reacted to on uh, Slovenia. So you have to go check it out and take that. So messy. In the meantime, you all take care of each other, all right? Cool, and it's...